Hey folks, Prepper Princess. So today I wanted to first of all say that it is pretty much my last night in this house. Tomorrow I pick up the U-Haul trailer and I will be loading, uh, spending one more night here and then I leave the day after that and I'll be unpacking in my new home in Arizona. As you can see, the house is pretty much completely empty, but today I wanted to talk to you about the working poor and how the numbers do not add up by any statistic or any article that I can find. So I recently made a video about, you know, I was so poor that during my childhood, and there were a lot of really sad stories uh, or stories that really hit close to home in the comment section of that video. And thank you all so much for um, providing your stories and letting people know how it really is out there. So I've been researching money saving finances for years now, ever since I became debt free 14 years ago. Um, it's, it's been a passion of mine and the numbers don't add up. They just don't. And there gets to be a point where we have to say to somebody, the government needs to step in and something needs to change. And I'm getting to the point, I mean, I've written the president, I don't know how many times I've written senators, governors, anybody who will listen. And I always get the wonderful letter back that says, thank you for your comments, which is, you know, great. You saw my, you saw my letter, but you did nothing about it. Uh, didn't even, you know, write a real letter back to me. But, you know, I'm trying to think of how to put this into words. So... 80%, eight out of 10 Americans live paycheck to paycheck. 50%, uh, almost 50% of Americans do not have $400 to cover an emergency. 20% or less have less than $1,000 in a savings account. People are not saving for retirement. People are um, running, there's just no money. There's no money in people's pockets. And you know, we even have the elderly. Uh, elderly are dying lonely because society has sort of turned them away. And uh, we are also having a lot of elderly who are food insecure or food poor. I believe that the last statistic I read, but you know, every article is different, is that six out of 10 um, elderly are living in poverty, going to food banks, do not have a vehicle, uh, are barely able to keep themselves afloat. And you know, there's also other statistics that I find difficult to understand. Um, and I think that what the main cause of all of this is personal debt. The government sets an example by printing money and living off of debt and debt is good, debt is great, consume, consume, consume because America does not make products anymore. Uh, the first thing that happens when you're 17, 18 years old is you sign up for a credit card, uh, has a $12,000 limit, you run yourselves $12,000 into, into debt because there's no financial education in our school systems. After you turn 18, you typically go to college and you take out a very large student loan to go to college. So your $12,000 just turned into 60 or 70. There are a lot of houses in the United States for $70,000. And if people didn't get that first credit card and didn't go to college and they saved up their money for one or two years while living at home with their parents, they could easily purchase their own home and live out their entire lives debt free. But society sets a standard that it's okay to be in debt. And it's disheartening, it's saddening, and it's difficult to get out of. You can walk yourself into debt, but you can you have to dig your way out. And that's why I live debt free. Um, it doesn't have that much to do with my childhood. My mother tried teaching me and I, I was a thick headed kid and it didn't get through until I put myself in that position, saw all of my bills and I said, uh-uh, not gonna happen to me. And then I worked for a year and a half straight for I don't know how many hours in a week, but too many to count. And I got myself out of it and promised myself I'd never get back in. But at the same time, um, I think that our government needs to step in and say, hey, something's not right here. You know, we are, there is essentially the working class and the non-working class. And we're at a breaking point where it's almost 50-50. 50% of the United States citizens are working. 
and 50% are not, whether that be through welfare or um, social security or disability, Medicare, Medi-Cal, Medicaid, uh, food stamps, EBT cards, and all of those things that add up. And it feels as though we're on the brink of turning into a socialist society where there is no longer any incentive for people to work. I mean, we work ourselves to death and then at the end of it, we have nothing to show for it except being tired and sad and depressed all the time, which is another reason why so many people are on prescription medications, illegal drugs, opioids, marijuana. Don't get me wrong, I don't have anything against marijuana. I think that it has a lot of amazing medicinal purposes that pharmaceutical companies will not bring to the surface because there's no profit in it for them, that people can grow them for free. And there's no profit in pharmaceuticals if the person who has the illness can get their cure for free. Um, but when it comes to illegal drugs, you know, and there's addictions everywhere, it's not just drugs. Uh, alcohol, when I was a kid, alcohol was known to be, you know, not bad, but not good either and wineries and breweries and pubs are popping up everywhere and it seems like these places flourish wherever they go and it's because society has an addiction to it. Um, if it's not alcohol or drugs, prescription drugs, it's typically you become a workaholic, which is my problem, um, or there are food addictions. I mean, look at my 600 pound life. It's turned into an addiction because society has made it okay to be overweight, be okay to eat uh, yourself to excess. And our society has changed so much since the 80s and 90s that I don't really recognize it anymore. And this is just the way that growth happens. But the working poor are the ones who are feeling the pinch the most. If you are if you are in debt, it seems like you can't get ahead no matter how hard you try. The housing has become so expensive that it, even with two adults living in the household working two jobs each are still spending half of their income or more just on their monthly rent to keep a roof over their heads. And what can we do to change this? A lot of channels come out here and they say the problems, but they never say the solutions. My Personal philosophy is that, I guess to quote Michael Jackson, let's start with the man in the mirror or the woman in the mirror. If you have children's nieces, nephews, teach them that debt is bad. Teach them that addictions are not good for you un unless it's something that is productive and therapeutic. Uh, gardening, uh, raising animals, things along those lines, hiking, biking. Um, I think that we really need to change our school systems to teach financial education if we want this country to get back on track. I think it's extremely important and it's not something that was offered while I was going through school. When, if you have somebody that you can mentor to teach them, do not get a credit card, do not take out a car loan, do work your way through college, do not get a college loan, it will teach them to delay gratification and teach them to save their money and they will all be so much better off for it. it. You know, if you could go back in time, would you still take out that student loan? If you could go back in time, would you still take that outrageous car loan? If you could go back in time, would you still go back and open all of those credit cards? My guess is if you're watching this channel, you would go back in time, slap yourself in the face and say, no, you work your way through it and do not borrow against any circumstance. So <clears throat> if you have a chance, write to your governor, write to your senators, write to your president, ask them to create financial education in the school system. And if they say no, then it's up to us as the citizens of the United States to teach people how to budget their finances and how, how little distance the dollar goes this day, in, in these days and in these times. We're all struggling um, to reach our goals or to become debt free. And this channel is a platform for us to share our ideas and share our knowledge, essentially. And um, I just wanted to take a minute to thank you guys 
Uh, again, I, I don't have a whole lot. I can't really do anything exciting in the house or cook meals. Everything is packed and it has been packed for a month. So, so once I move into my new place, I'll get back to the cooking videos. I'll be doing home renovation videos. Um, you know, I'm doing a lot of DIY projects to update the house that I'm moving into. And I think that you guys are really going to like it. Um, and don't forget to check out my Patreon page if you're interested in more personalized videos of what I go on through my daily life, not just talking about money saving and prepping, but talking about personal stories, things that I go through on a daily basis. Um, and I hope that if you have any ideas on how we can improve society from this point on, please leave your comments in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Do what you can with what you've got. Prepper Princess out. Do your mommy's seat. Are you comfy on mommy's seat? I need to do my YouTube. You're not gonna let me? Not gonna let me, huh? Is that your new seat? I swear, you're like a billy goat. You make yourself comfortable just about everywhere, don't ya? Don't you, Mr. Cutie Pants? Yeah, yeah.